Hello there. So, it's been a while since we've done a reaction video. Um, I want to try and record this, uh, this, uh, this video. And, uh, I'm still sick, still recovering. That's why I'm in my, my tank top. I'm put my face off. But, uh, we're going to try and make this one a good one. And I'm going to try and make a good quality for you. I hope you enjoy. And, uh, make sure to take care of yourself. I do like the idea that, and this is known by Linkin Park, obviously, that uh, they've got the main characters like a you know, teenage girl, maybe early 20s. I love this first line. Tired of being what you want me to be. Like, it's just, it's so nice. Because it, it is, it, it's exhausting being somebody else. And as somebody who lived their life, uh, being what I thought other people wanted or needed me to be, uh, prevented my own personal growth because I was just playing a character. And it hurts. It, uh, it creates a real emotional sadness within your own psyche. Also, they in a church? I do like the, the, uh, the fishnets to me are cool. Um, like, when I saw a girl like this in high school, I know some people thought like, oh, she's trying to be sexual or she's trying to be like whatever. But to me, I always saw that as um, like natural camouflage. You know what I mean? Like when you when you go out in the wild and you see like a a poisonous animal or plant or whatever, you know that have those bright colors. That that to me was fishnets. That to me was like don't piss this girl off because she's going through some shit and she will probably take it farther than you want to take it if it comes to an altercation. Don't know what you expect. Same deal with the guys who wear a bunch of black in the trench coats and stuff. It just it just. To me, it was a warning sign. It was like, hey, things can get out of hand pretty quick. Of me, put under the pressure of they are in church. They're in a church. Walking in your shoes. I fucking love that, dude. I love that. Because he's, he's reinforcing the point about why we had to become a different person. It's because some other person is putting input into our, into our lives that is saying you're wrong. You talk the wrong way. You dress the wrong way. You're not, uh, you know, taking care of yourself in the right way. Maybe you're not working out or maybe you're eating the wrong stuff or maybe they just don't like how much you use vulgarity. Uh, and, and, and it may be constructive criticism, but it's only constructive criticism if the person wants to hear it. I don't think that this is a hundred percent correct, but it feels that way when you're this. In the, I'm not going to say depressed because I can't say that they are depressed. I, I know the background, but I don't know where the person was in their life mental state when they wrote this. Um, but I've been in a mental state similar to that where you do feel like you have a pretty good clarity. Um, when you're that tired, when you're that numb, when you're that out of touch with reality, because you you feel like you see things for what they are because you have an outside perspective or a perceived outside perspective versus you know uh versus what everyone else sees because they're engaged in the in the activity i don't know that that's true or false but i i do understand the feeling that that line comes from it resonates with me Uh, 
um, this is another reason why people don't talk that I've talked to at least about depression or that I've experienced or even from my own verbiage there was a long time where I didn't talk to anybody about anything um, because you feel like once you let something slip you're gonna tell everyone everything and there's some shit you don't want anyone to know about and the problem is is that you, you, you might be in such a, 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 a emotionally vulnerable state that you may not be able to stop yourself talking and that usually comes from it happening once or twice and then you're like okay I can't talk to anybody I'm gonna lose control lose control cause everything that you thought I would be is falling apart right in front of you every step that I take is I do like the idea that the family structure is included in this a family breakdown can definitely send somebody into uh, a pseudo-depressive state and a lot of times like my family is always very supportive but I know that if I was in that state and I was having a family structure breakdown issue it would have been a lot worse for me because you're you're you think of um, think of self-esteem as an armor set right it's a it's a cloak it's an armor set that that sits on your body and depression is just waiting for a chink in that armor to slip slip in through the crack and come get you that's what it's like because it's uh, depression feels like it's just a uh, at least for me it feels like it's a constant pressure wave just 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 hanging around just waiting for its opportunity and it could be in anything, any kind of issue. Your boss yells at you, or you have a family structure break, uh, family structure breakdown. Your dog dies. Your girlfriend's mad at you. It could be anything. That's all it takes, man. Then it's in, and you've got to repair that self esteem. You got to repair that 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 armor before you can stop the poison from leaking in anymore. That, that right there. Every second I waste is more than I can take. That's all it fucking takes. That is all. It, if you were compromised emotionally, and some people stay compromised emotionally for decades, that is all it takes to have a depressive episode. That is all it would take for me to have a depressive episode in certain periods of my life. A hundred percent. I used to, I had a dress code in my middle school, and I would purposely, every day, you know, my mom would be like, hey, we got another, we got another call, you weren't in dress code, make sure you have your belt on today, so she'd make sure I had my belt before I left, and I would take it off, you know, I worked for my first two classes, my third class, I go in the bathroom, I take it off, why? Because they were going to send me to detention, and if they sent me to detention, then I had a place to sit at, at, at lunch with the other four or five delinquents that were in there every day. And that's what I started doing because I literally didn't feel comfortable eating in a, in a cafeteria at all, ever. I didn't care that I gave up my recess. I just, I just wanted a place to sit and eat without being judged. And because I was in going to, you know, detention or whatever you call it uh, for lunch, um, I had already been judged. There was a reason that I was there, and I belonged there. And that alleviated a lot of the stress and pain for me. I can't feel you there. So, so much more aware. I'm becoming this. All I want to do is be more like me and be less like you. And I know. You know. And that's that's another one of those. That's a great example of 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 being what I what I you know what I was supposed to be, because I I needed to be known as a delinquent so I could show up to detention. Uh, but I wasn't being myself because back then I wasn't I wasn't a delinquent. I did my homework. I showed up to class. I hated every second of it. 
I was miserable there. But so far as a student, I was pretty good. And actually, it got so commonplace with so many write-ups that I just started showing up there without the write-ups. And everybody just kind of assumed that I was supposed to be there because I was a delinquent. Um, so the real me never got to actually be showcased. I have no idea if I would have eventually had friends. Probably not, because obviously if I could have made friends in the first place, I wouldn't have had to become a delinquent. But we'll never know. Honestly, when you're at this stage of emotional compromised, uh, being emotionally compromised, it's hard. And if you don't have an outlet, that's when things get really, really, really dark. My outlet was Boy Scouts. Her outlet seems to be art. Um, but just being able to cry or, or be able to feel something, some sort of release, is very important. Give me a second. I'm going to actually have to cough. Sorry about that. I think they their their choice to do this in the church was very well done. Um, it gave them obviously enough room to showcase all of their talents and everything, but it also uh, the sim symbology that um, the church for many people means sanctuary it means a safe place uh, just like I was looking for a safe place uh, in the detention hall a lot of folks they just looking for somewhere to be okay they don't want to feel good they just don't want to feel bad anymore and I think that that's that's reasonable This is what I really like about music videos, man. They take you on a journey. I like, I like having an experience. Now, I've already been on this journey before. Of course I've seen this video. And uh, uh, of course I've, I've had this journey in my own life, which is why it resonates with me so much. But so far as just the video itself, I loved that there was a story, there was a main character, there was experiences, and there were, there were things you could take away from it and see an evolution. And I love that it ended up, it's a depression video with her still having hope, still seeking solace, still seeking that, that safe place that she hasn't given up. And if you're out there and you're feeling any of these kind of ways, don't give up. I've come close. Don't give up. It's hard. And it doesn't get better, but it will pass. Sure, it's going to come again, but it will pass. And there will be moments, years in your life, that will be absolutely wonderful. I just had probably two and a half, almost three years that were absolutely wonderful and, and blissful for my existence. Maybe some of the happiest years of my life. Um, enjoy the good. And manage the bad. Don't forget to have an outlet. And find somebody safe to talk to. Because if you don't, it, it, it builds up into a boiling point that nobody wants to go to. So thank you so much. I've been talking for 15 minutes on a three minute video, so I should let you go.